All right, well, hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Celeste Harrison. I'm at National Geographic headquarters in Washington, D.C., and I cannot wait to welcome you all to this very, very special Explorer Classroom with the amazing wildlife filmmaker, Bertie Gregory. He's got some pretty cool stuff with him, so I just want to let him dig in. He's in Arctic Canada. He's in a big old snow suit. Let's let him take over. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Thanks very much for that lovely introduction. Um, yeah, I'm uh, currently um, on the Hudson. Take a big map for North America, Canada. Basically, Canada is Manitoba and then the giant bay. And at this time of year, it's well, the reason we're here is that this time of year, it's in the process of freezing up. So the, the ocean is freezing. Um, and that is why polar bears um, are gathering here. And that's actually why we're here. We're here to film them for a new uh, National Geographic series. Now, we have um, kind of a crazy setup here, so I'm going to introduce you to various bits of what's going on. We're currently in a tower in our camp, and if I kind of show you around, um, we are surrounded by little buildings. That is where we sleep, that cabin there on the left. There's also, um, if I point down here, you can see that fence. Well, that fence is... Uh, basically to keep us safe. That is our polar bear fence. And uh, this is my big camera, which will be uh, hopefully looking at some stuff in a second. Uh, and this is Steve. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so Steve is a polar bear extraordinaire uh, tracker, and he is at the moment trying to find us a polar bear so we can show you one live. With me, if I spin around, we have Connor and Spencer. They're part of my camera team. So, uh, hey, guys. Hello. Connor is uh, is going to be uh, flying a drone in a second for us. Um, if Connor, you want to set that up, so hopefully we can show you some aerial views of this beautiful place because we're next to some uh, some amazing forest, um, and in that forest there's also some moose. So fingers crossed that we can uh, find you some of that. But first up, let's show you a little let's show you a little polar bear. Um, is he still there, Steve? It just move slightly to the right. Okay. Just behind those two. Two trees. Okay, so right let me just flip our camera around. Is that going to work? Yes. Okay. Where are you looking? Uh, he's, yeah, I can see him. He's parked himself. Okay, so if you look out here, what you're looking at in front of us is an aeroplane here. Um, but if you look out behind the aeroplane, that's basically all along there is the water's edge. Um, the edge of the, the, the ocean, the Hudson Bay, um, and the polar bears are basically congregating on this bit of the bay because they're waiting for the ocean to freeze there. Now, here's the polar bear. Okay, so if I show you my screen, he is out. And how cool is that? That is a polar bear. And he is walking, 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 and he is just miles away from us. We're using this really, really big long zoom lens to, to zoom in. And just to give you an idea of how far away this polar bear is, if I zoom the camera out, you can see how much this camera is zooming, 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 zooming. He is a long, long way away. And I've lost him now that I've zoomed out so far. That was sensible. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't think that would work. It has. That's pretty exciting. If I flip my camera back around, yep, that's my face. A little too close for comfort. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, these bears, they've spent the summer on land, here on land, um, and they're basically starving. They need the sea ice uh, to, to hunt seals. So they're waiting for the, the sea to freeze so that um, they can then go out onto the ice and, and hunt some seals. Um, Connor, how are we doing? Doing good. Okay, I'm just going to – let's just get Connor in the air here. So he's going to basically show us an aerial view um, of the landscape uh, that we're in. But at the moment, yeah, we're filming a new series for National Geographic. Um, and uh, it's all pretty exciting. And Spencer, can you uh, just tell Paul? Paul, you're going to cut our connection if you come. So there's Paul, another one of the guides. He's just coming up to help us find some animals. Um, but just wanted to make sure he doesn't cut off our uh, satellite internet connection to you. If you're interested in how we're coming to you. It's just down here. It's this weird little crazy box. Amazing piece of technology. Um, so, yeah, we're here filming a new series for National Geographic. 
Um, and yeah, it's all about uh, the various Arctic animals here. So the polar bear uh, and all other kinds of animals. Now, um, I don't know uh, if um, this is going to work. Let's see if I can find that polar bear again. Freddie, are you still there? You froze a little bit on us. All right, my on-screen classes. I'm going to turn off our cameras to try and give Bertie all the bandwidth we possibly can. And taking off. Cool. Okay. Where is going to fly out to the forest because we've shown you okay. all of that. Uh, there. So, can we just have a view of your swimming to the horizon? So you can see we've got these big lines of trees and then these open areas as well. In between those big green trees, you can see there's those big brown bushes and those are willows and that's really what the moose are uh, browsing on. But we'll leave, uh, oh, and that's where we are. So if, um, that's a uh, camp there. But we'll leave Connor for a few minutes um, to try and find some, uh, some animals for us. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, unless Steve, you've found anything else? That polar bear got up, done anything interesting? It's behind some bushes right now. It's behind some bushes. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's a pretty good time to open up the floor to some questions if anyone has any. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get uh, Connor to find us a moose in the meantime. That's amazing. Let's go for some questions in Iowa. Let's swing through a class of fifth graders with Miss Agastol. I'm going to turn on your microphone now. Do you need to help me with that? Yes. Can you hear us? We sure can. Go for it. So it's really hard to hear. Could you explain? The coldest temperature. What actually? I think the question was, what's the coldest temperature we've experienced here? Um, hopefully, that's the right question. Um, well, so far it's been uh, lowest about minus fifteen degrees Celsius. This depends on what's the Fahrenheit. I'm not very good on my American Fahrenheit. <laughs> so, so it's about a lot less than zero, basically, a lot less than 32, so a lot less than the freezing point water. So we've been having lots and lots of snow. Um, but yeah, about minus 15 degrees Celsius. Sorry that I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Great okay, question. Thank you. That is perfectly okay. We can do that conversion for you while the next class is asking their question. Let's go to Texas for a question from Ms. Goff's third graders. On your microphone now, Ms. Goff. Can you help me out with that? Hi. Miss Goff, we're not quite able to hear you, so would you use the chat feature to send us your question that way, and I'll ask it super loud for you? Great, thank you so much. For now, let's swing by Ms. Woods' classroom for a nice and loud question from our fifth and sixth graders in Canada. Bertie, our students in Toronto want to know what made you first want to do your field work. 
Um, so I guess the, the, the first reason is that I'm totally obsessed with animals. I can't get enough of them. And when I was at school, um, everyone used to think I was a bit strange because I liked to, to sneak off in any spare moment I had and go and find, uh, find animals. So what I would say is that if you guys want to film wildlife or find wildlife or study wildlife as a scientist in the future, the best practice you can do uh, for, for that is to get outside uh, and try and get up close and personal with, with lots and lots of wildlife. So yeah, get outside and spend as much time as you can um, with, with wildlife and always make sure that if you're, um, if you're trying to look for, uh, uh, you know, the bigger animals that are potentially a bit dangerous, make sure you're with someone that knows, um, how to interact with that animal because knowing the animal is, is key to making sure that you guys are safe, the animals are safe, but also when we're trying to film wildlife, natural behavior, we're always trying to, we don't want to disturb the animals. So that's the, um, that's the best way of, uh, of doing that. Amazing. Our answer for that class in Iowa, the coldest weather in Fahrenheit that Bertie has seen is five degrees. That's pretty darn cold. Um, we've got a question coming in from uh, the classroom who couldn't quite hear us, Miss Goff's classroom. They're wondering how wolves handle blizzards. You know anything about that, Bertie? How do wolves handle blizzards? Well, they've uh, one of the best things that they've got in their kind of armory to keep it warm. They've got that big thick fur coat, in particular that big bushy tail. Um, and in winter, when the temperatures drop, they actually rub their coat thicker than in the summer. Um, and so they'll give a little snow drift. They'll even give a bit of cover. They'll curl up that big in front of their face. Um, so yeah, so they put a big, big fur coat on, and then. Awesome. Let's take our next question from Miss Holden's class in Alberta. Turn on your microphone and ask your question. Guys, I think I'm having snowball fights. Let's keep this to his career related. Who has another question for career related? I think. I think. I think the question was, um, have I ever been attacked by an animal? Well, um, I've been. Uh, I've always uh, either known the the animal that I'm working with, or, or I've been with specialists that know the animals much better than me. If I don't know, so that's why I've got Steve here. He's our. Pro I'm always with experts that know the animals and they know how to keep us safe and the yeah and uh, so yeah as I said just like with trying to find animals the best way of, of uh, interacting with animals is to making sure you're with someone that knows them really really well um, so that they know how to how to behave around them so so that you can see them behaving naturally and they're not they're not being uh, disturbed so uh, yeah um, people are far more dangerous than, than animals excellent advice birdie let's go to Calgary <laughs> He's, he's, he's get the next Connor, has, Connor has found a moose on the drone. So um, he's going to show us uh, the moose. Connor, are you still with the moose? Okay. There's a cow and a cat moose. Oh, I want to tune out. Five. Okay, I've got volume on here too. Thank you. What? Okay, uh, we're ready for the next question. Bertie, that was amazing. Wow. Let's go to Ms. Bork's class in Calgary um, and see if those sixth graders have any questions. Who is the person who 
to begin a photograph. Go ahead and say that one more time, a little bit louder for us, please. Uh, who is the person that encouraged you to persuade your dream, to pursue your dream to become a filmmaker, photographer? Sorry, could you repeat that question? Yes. Who is the person who encouraged you to pursue to pursue your dream to become a filmmaker, photographer? So who who encouraged me? Um, I mean, uh, they're definitely one individual person. Um, there's been lots and lots of people that I've been lucky enough to have as mentors uh, over the years. Um, at National Geographic, there's a photographer called Steve Winter. He is National Geographic, one of National Geographic's top wildlife people. He focuses on big cats. He photographed things like snow leopards and tigers and lions. Um, I was lucky enough to work his assistant for two years. That was how I started with National Geographic. So he definitely encouraged me uh, to, to, yeah, get out there and... Um, Try and uh, try and show animals and nature in, in new ways to, to hopefully get people to care about it as much as we do. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we're going to swing through our next classroom for another question there in Salem, Virginia. Before we do, though, I know we've got a lot of wind noise up in Canada, and I think Bertie's having a little bit of trouble hearing some of our questions. So let's all, as classrooms, be as quiet as we possibly can be while Virginia asks their question. Go for it, Mrs. Painter's class. Hi. Um, quick question. Is there any way everybody can see this, the moose? Miss Painter, we're not able to hear you right now. Could you be just a little louder? Sure. Can you hear me now? We sure can. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are trying to find out when his film on polar bears might be published. When's the film? Uh, absolutely no idea. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't know the specific. Um, but the best way of, of finding out is. Um, to, to follow me on Instagram. Um, so I don't know if the teachers can do that. Um, my handle is at Bertie Gregory. Um, and uh, yeah, I post all updates there. So um, any as soon as I know um, when, uh, when our project will be coming out, that's the first place uh, that you'll be able to find out. Um, but in the meantime, um, uh, I've got a new series uh, that's recently come out on National Geographic. Uh, and if you search natgeo.com forward slash wildlife, you can watch it. And it was all about um, the wildlife of the island of South Georgia. So it's at the uh, opposite end of the world to where we are at the moment um, in the sub-Antarctic. And it's all about penguins and seals and albatross and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, check that out in the, in the meantime. And, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll post updates as to when I know uh, when this project's coming out. Amazing. Thank you so much, Bertie. And do you have time for another set of questions? Yeah, just before uh, we do the questions, I've just got to catch the drone. Is that okay? Oh, please do. Cool. There you go. Beautiful. What a smooth landing. We've also got another. We've got another. We've got another polar bear as well. How cool is that? Right, so what's that last question for run out of battery? Well, let's find out. Let's go back to Ms. Egastal for her last question. Okay. Can you hear us? We sure can. Go for it. I can read. Ask him. Ask him. Um, how close have you been to a polar bear or any of the wildlife? 
Close. 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 We got we got really close um, uh, a few days ago to a big bull moose, um, and he was crossing a, a river, um, and he crossed right in front of us. Um, was, yeah, huge. So very cool to be close. He was about fifteen meters away from us. So what's that? Um, and yeah, we could see he was because it was a it's all day. We could see we were so close that we could see his breath. It's oh coming God. out of his mouth. So yeah, the closest we've got to any animals so far. How old do you think would be? And let other people ask questions. Okay, okay. Thank you. Well, Bertie, we so appreciate you taking some time out of your day to join us. You're doing such cool work. No, we no, no. wait to see it. Do you have any last advice for our students on screen with us today? Uh, the biggest thing is just to get outside and spend as, as much time outside as possible. Um, you know, uh, learning to, to find animals um, and uh, making sure you have a good time as well. And if you do really like animals, get, try and get your friends interested in them as well because you know, we need nature and wildlife for everything we do, clean air, productive soils, um, you know, drinking water. We need it for everything. Um, so, yeah, it's not just the other way around. It's all interconnected and it's also important and your work does such a good job of showing us that. Thank you so much to all of our classrooms watching at home um, or watching on screen with us. Check out the rest of our schedule at natgeoed.org backslash explore classroom. Like and subscribe so you never miss a video uh, and study hard. Go ahead and everybody say bye. Wave.